Hello everyone! Today we will talk about jewelry of 1940s. The jewels of the late 1940s shared with the early production the tendency towards massive looking ornaments and foreshadowed the 1950s interest in naturalism. Also, in the use and choice of the gemstones, they fall between the uh, parsimony of the early 1940s and the opulence of the 1950s. As frequently happens after a war, the desire to restore the values of the pre-conflict years encouraged many conservative jewelers and many women less sensitive to the changes of fashion uh, to go back to the shapes and the models popular in the late 1930s. Many pre-war creations, such as the Van Cleef and Arpels honeycomb bracelets uh, or the invisibly set flower head brooches, were already perfectly suitable for the new look dresses. The economic boom which followed the war, the desire to rebuild and restore what had been destroyed, that the determination to reconstruct a new wealth out of the rubble characterized the early 1950s. Both industry and the economy flourished, and conservatism after the years of privation made um, its appearance with television opening uh, the way of immediate communication of images from all over the world. Traveling and holiday in abroad became popular after years of border restriction, and owning a car became a reality for many. The visual arts, and as a consequence of the decorative arts, opened up a variety of contrasting influence. Abstraction and surrealism, which made their appearance in the 1930s, achieved widespread popularity. Abstract expressionism and action painting were the avant-garde movements. The aesthetic of design tended towards free, light, simple, essential and functional lines. Industrial design was in its infancy attempting to combine aesthetics and functionality. Earrings. Earrings were worn throughout the 1940s, mainly in the shape of ear clips, uh, designed as a large uh, gold fan-shaped motifs, knots, ribbons, bows, flower heads, scrolls, shells. More important examples were similarly designed and entirely set with diamonds or invisibly set with rubies or sapphires. Gold was the preferred material for day earrings, which were usually short in the design of leaves, scrolls, turbans, spirals, clusters. Gold Creole earrings were popular for day wear, but the type of earring uh, which best exemplifies the 1950s is the design as a bolle of gold wire studded with gemstones, often rubies and turquoises, or rubies and sapphires or diamonds. Earrings for evening wear tended to be rich and sumptuous in design and lavishly set with precious gemstones. The designs were the same as those for day wear, except that gold was substituted by diamonds. Gem sets, scrolls, curled leaves, flower heads, rosettes, turbans, often of considerable size, became the surmounts of long, articulated cascades of tassels or baguette diamonds, terminated with marquise or pear shaped drops, occasionally stretching it almost to the shoulder and free to move, glitter and reflect the light. Necklaces. Toward the end of 1940s, necklaces in the shape of precious bibs of articulated gold plaques or geometrical design alternated with colored stones were used to adorn the generous decolletage of the glamorous new look evening dresses. In the 1950s, necklaces were worn both for day and evening wear, generally short, sometimes in the shape of choker, tightly fastened at the base of the neck. They were the ideal complement to the generous heart-shaped decolletages of evening gowns and to the simple necklace, uh, necklines of day and afternoon dresses. Uh, gold necklaces in the shape of swags and garlands of plain or corded wire uh, were designed as flat mesh ribbons made of bands of pleated wire or twisted in the form of slim torsades and set with small diamonds or colored stones. Brooches Flower brooches assumed the exotic shapes of orchids. Van Cleef and Arpels excelled in the production of flower head brooches. Clips, contained, uh, clips continued to be worn in the early 1950s, but the fashion was gradually moving towards a preference for brushes within in the second part of the decade. Uh, became ideal or ornament uh, to pin at the side of decolletages. 
Bracelets. Bracelets were among the most popular jewels of 1940s, mostly made of variously colored gold. They consisted of articulated bands of more or less elaborate linking, always bulky and voluminous in appearance. Clubs were large and three-dimensional, designed to bombay medallions, stylized buckles or bridge motifs, often set with diamonds, rubies and sapphires. The Van Cleef and Arpels honeycomb bracelet created in the previous decade continued to be very fashionable and was widely copied and imitated by many other jewelers. Gold tank chains or bicycle chains, as well as other motifs inspired by industry, were often sent with semi-precious stones such as amethysts, citrines and peridots. Other currently popular bracelets consisted of white gold bands of basket or chevron linking and of tubular chains of flexible linking, variously decorated and with the gem set clasps. White gold cuff bracelets set in random with various precious and semi-precious stones were in vogue. Rings. Rings, which tended to be heavy and massive in the 1940s, were usually decorated in geometric motifs such as prism, cylinders, trapezes or styles, scrolls. Rings in the 1950s were often worn several at a time. The fashion was massive, continued well into the 1950s, with the design moving towards curved forms away uh, from angular geometry of the previous decade. Uh, and today it's um, all we would like to discuss with you. Uh, stay tuned for future podcasts. Goodbye.